morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Lipsa. Um, I am with uh, Kitware. I'm going to talk today about uh, uh, Paraview. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Kitware. I guess just one slide. Uh, then uh, I'm going to describe what Paraview is. We're going to talk about the user interface, uh, the pipeline browser, and the object inspector and uh, some important objects uh, in Paraview, filters, representations, and views. Uh, just talk about finding data and selection. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to run Paraview in parallel. And for the hands-on section, uh, we're going to go over the Paraview tutorial, which is included with the Paraview binary. And we're going to go as, as far as we can through those step-by-step uh, uh, -step examples. So uh, while I'm giving the presentation, I would advise to install Paraview 5.4 if you didn't uh, do it already. If you are on Windows, you have to install Party. That will enable you to connect to, to uh, Cooley, to uh, uh, supercomputers here at Argon. If you are on uh, Mac OS, you have to install XQuartz. So you know, go ahead and install those uh, while I'm giving this presentation. So I'm with Kitware. We are a small open source company uh, located in upstate New York. Uh, we work on a number of uh, open source projects together with our collaborators and, and customers and with external contributors as well. So VTK is the visualization toolkit. This is a visualization library. Uh, been the, probably the uh, one of the important visualization libraries. Uh, Paraview is the uh, visualization application, parallel visualization application I'm going to talk about uh, today. CMake, you heard this mentioned in the last uh, night talk. Uh, this is a building tool, or it's the configuration step before the actual build happens. This figures out to your system where each library is located and builds the, the make file for building your C++ application. Uh, ITK, this is a uh, insight segmentation and registration toolkit. This is used in uh, medical field. It's a library for processing medical images. 3D slicer. <coughs> this is a, a visualization application for the medical field. Uh, CMB and TomViz, so this is computational mo model builder. Uh, this builds models and also builds and edits meshes for using it as inputs in a simulation. Uh, TomViz uh, is a visualization application for electron tomography for material sciences. Both these are Paraview-based applications, so they are built on top of Paraview. Uh, the idea is to build a domain-specific application that provides less uh, flexibility, but it's also less complex than Paraview, and also it provides additional algorithms specific for that domain. Uh, Resonant is a, a platform for building web applications and also for analytics. This is a more recent uh, project at Kitware, and Quiver is a, is a, a project from our com computer vision uh, group. It deals with image and video analysis, detecting events in, in videos and, and so on. So we are involved in these, uh, uh, all these projects. Uh, we help our customers to, uh, I guess, build custom applications based on these projects. Uh, we support all, all these all these projects. So, uh, what is Paraview? It's an open source application and framework for display and analysis of scientific data sets. It uh, won the best HPC visualization product uh, in 2016 from HPC Wire. It ran this uh, record setting in situ simulation run. Uh, first in situ uh, run that exceeded one million uh, nodes. <clears throat> so, 
Paraview is, uh, is many things. So first of all, it's a visualization application that runs on the desktop. It's built with Qt. You can load it. You can uh, load your files on the desktop and uh, build your visualization or processing pipeline and create your visualization. Um, this is an application that uses Qt or Qt uh, UI, and uh, it's written in C++. Paraview runs on the web as well. So in this uh, scenario, you have your visualization that runs in the browser. It looks more or less as the Paraview on the desktop, and that connects to a server that actually produces the visualization. All the interface is built in the, in the web browser. <coughs> uh, Paraview, you can drive the visualization Everything that you can do in, uh, in the uh, desktop application, you can drive that using Python. So there are actually two ways of, of using Python. You can build your interface and build your pipeline and produce your uh, visualization entirely using Python, or you can write a Python script that you can do, that can do some custom processing and you can include that algorithm in the big visualization pipeline that you, you create. So you can use Python this way as well. Uh, Paraview runs, uh, can display visualizations in these uh, cave environments or on, on multi-screen <coughs> uh, environments. Uh, Paraview run on the largest supercomputers. Uh, you already uh, heard about uh, in situ Paraview. So <clears throat> this is a Paraview library that you link with the simulation code. You have to go in, in the simulation code, figure out uh, their data structures, and either copy those data for every step into Paraview or provide zero copy access to the data. So at every step, the simulation runs your Catalyst script that produces the analysis and visualization <coughs> and is able to save an image file or, um, so basically it's gonna restrict the, the data that you need to save and detect features that you might otherwise miss because you have to throw away the data. You cannot save all the data that you are, you are producing. <coughs> I already mentioned we build uh, custom applications based on Paraview. These are domain specific. This is one of them that processes uh, LiDAR data. So these applications have a simpler inter interface for a domain specific, uh, for a specific domain, uh, provide less uh, flexibility than Paraview, but uh, may have uh, additional functionality for that specific domain. Okay, so uh, hopefully this gave you an overview of what you can do with, with Paraview. Um, so we're gonna uh, j jump right in and look at the user interface that uh, Paraview provides. So <coughs> as any application, it has a menu bar, it has toolbars with most commonly used uh, operations. The pipeline browser <coughs> shows you the processing pipeline. So this is a series of steps that you uh, execute to process your data and produce your visualization. Uh, you have the object inspector that shows you properties for the pipeline objects or filters. You have uh, properties uh, for, uh, that you use to adjust the display and then you have view properties. For, for every step in your pipeline, that's called a filter. You can look at uh, reference for that filter. So this is how a, a reference for the cylinder filter or the cylinder source looks like. Uh, Paraview has a comprehensive uh, uh, help. So we provide a two-page getting started with Paraview uh, document. We have the Paraview guide, which is a comprehensive reference uh, I think it's about 200 pages. You can look up individual things that you, you want to see how, how they work. We have this filter reference that uh, provides documentation for every uh, uh, 
operation that you can do in Paraview. We have the Paraview tutorial. We're gonna use that for our hands-on. So this provides step-by-step uh, -step instructions uh, for doing various exercises with, with the data. It's a very good way to learn to use uh, Paraview. Uh, there is a Paraview mailing list. You know, if you start using Paraview and you have questions, definitely that's a good resource to, to use. Just send a question to the Paraview mailing list. More certainly, you, you'll get an answer. We have a Paraview wiki. This is mostly for developers, but uh, you get good information there. So how do you use Paraview? You start with file open, you read your data, yeah? You tune in the filter, the, the reader properties. So usually this allows you to read only certain attributes of the data so that you don't fill, fill up your memory. You have to hit apply after you do that. You add a filter to process the data. You adjust the filter properties, you hit apply. You keep adding filters as you uh, transform your data. So that's how you build your uh, processing pipeline. Change display properties and view properties. After you are happy with the image you, you obtained, you, have, you can save either the data that you uh, obtain at the end of your pipeline, you save an image, or you save <clears throat> the Paraview state. The Paraview state can, is used to restore exactly the processing pipeline you have in your program. So you can use that to, let's say, start in the place you were uh, you know, the next day, or you can send that to a colleague he will see the same processing pipeline. He can work on the same visualization as you. <clears throat> so this pipeline um, has a reader that reads the file. It has a slice filter, and then it has a warp filter. <clears throat> this is an example of filter properties. So I'm showing you uh, the filters, uh, the cylinder, <clears throat> source that creates a cylinder on the screen, and some properties that you can change here is the resolution, how many rectangles that cylinder has, the height, the radius, and the center, yeah. You may notice every time you change properties from your filter, you have to hit apply. The reason for that is Paraview is uh, uh, designed to work with very large data. If you change a property, uh, the processing pipeline has to be re-executed, and that potentially takes a long time. So we split this into two steps so that you, know, you don't get confused. You change a property, and then your, your program starts doing work without you knowing. So you have to hit apply to know that uh, it's gonna do, uh, the program is going to do work. If, uh, <clears throat> if you know you are working with uh, small data, you can toggle the auto-apply. Uh, So Paraview works with multiple views. All the views use uh, the same pipeline. So here I show you a slice uh, render view, a histogram, and uh, a spreadsheet that has all the data items. Yeah? Notice uh, how the pipeline looks like. So you have all the processing that you are doing. You have this eye next to the slice that's the uh, data that you're gonna show in this active view. The active view is shown using the, the blue rectangle, yeah? Uh, you can show the whole uh, cylinder here by clicking on the eye, yeah? So notice what happens when the histogram is, this, uh, the histogram view is active. In this case, the histogram filter has the eye next to it. So that means the data produced by this filter is gonna, show, is, is gonna be showed in the histogram view. And uh, when the spreadsheet is active, the whole, I guess the disk uh, data set, that has the eye next to it. So that means we show the disk, we show all the data items in the disk data set in the spreadsheet. So, Display properties, these, uh, uh, these 
uh, allow you to change how the data is going to be displayed on the screen. Uh, you have some standard properties. You can display your data as points, wireframe, surface, uh, surface with edges or volume. So this is the representation uh, here in this dialog. Uh, the display properties are associated with the active filter and the active view. We're going to see that uh, in the uh, examples as well. So notice uh, these representations usually color data. Uh, basically, you create a mapping between your scalars in the data and a range of, of colors. Yeah? You can adjust this mapping by using the color map editor. This editor has two parts. One, the top part adjusts the opacity. You can use that, for instance, for volume rendering. So the opacity here starts as uh, just a straight line with the lowest value being transparent and the highest value being completely opaque. And you can change the opacity or the transparency of your data by dragging uh, these control points and lowering, that is increasing transparency of, the, of your data. Here you can uh, adjust these color ranges by dragging the control points. Again, you change how you map the range of scalars to the range of colors. You have some uh, rescale buttons on the right here. You can rescale to data range. So Paraview works by uh, setting uh, a data range, a scalar range, <coughs> for a certain for one time step, and mapping that to a range of colors. If you move to the next time step, the scalar range stays the same. So you will need to uh, rescale the data. You can rescale to uh, custom range, custom scalar range, or you can rescale to the range for all your data time steps. So we'll, we will see examples to get a better understanding of how this works. <coughs> view properties just change properties for the current view, such as the background for the view, or you show uh, axes in the view or not. Uh, many filters can have quite a few properties, so it may be hard to uh, to find the right property, we alleviate this problem by providing, I guess, splitting the properties into uh, regular properties and advanced properties. So you can click on this button to view the advanced properties. You can also search for properties. So you type a few uh, letters uh, that will show only the properties that contain that substring. Yep, so L, E, N, only the properties that have these uh, letters in, the, the substring in, okay? You have to be careful. After you finished, you found your property, you have to delete these because otherwise you will search for a property, it won't be there because only the properties that uh, match this search uh, substring will be shown, okay? <clears throat> the object inspector, that's the second tab uh, that we, we've seen. This shows the information about the data produced by the current filter, by, by the active filter. So the kind of information that's shown is uh, what kind of data set you have. So in our case, we have a multi-block data set. The, this, the selected block is an unstructured grid. We're going to talk about this. It shows you all the attributes. These are point attributes. These are cell attributes. And these are attributes that are not associated with points or cells of your data set. <clears throat> it shows you the bounds of the data set, yeah? And then it shows you the time steps, the indexes and the actual time value. So these are the types of data sets that uh, VTK and Paraview supports. Uh, these are just optimizations. I've, uh, uh, you know, you could represent everything as an unstructured grid, but everything will run very slowly. So it's a, a lot more, you save a lot of memory if you represent the data as uh, uh, an image data. This is regular, you have squares or cubes. Uh, these are your cells, and the points of these uh, geometric elements are the points in your data set. You need the cells 
to interpolate between uh, the values in, in the points. <clears throat> yep, so. Uh, Multi-block data sets uh, are just separate data sets that may, may have been produced by different simulation runs that you want to put together. This way you could run your uh, visualization pipeline on the whole instead of running it on, on different pieces. Uh, AMR is uh, adaptive multi-resolution data set. Tries to take advantage to represent data as an image data, but in certain areas you want to have more detail and the, the uh, image data is denser. So there are various optimizations that we try to do so that your program, uh, I guess, uh, visualization runs as fast as possible and we, we use as little as possible memory. So this diagram uh, hopefully will uh, uh, clarify how um, uh, Paraviews is structured, so we show the pipeline browser. We start with the source, so a source just creates data. It doesn't read data, yeah, so it creates the data, and then you apply a filter, creates, it transforms the data, so it creates a new data, apply another filter, creates a new data, so that's your pipeline browser. If you want to show your data in a certain view, you have to create a representation. So these are the uh, objects that manage the, prop the display properties. Yeah. Note here, we want to show the same data in two different views. So that means you will have two representation objects. You will have different uh, display properties. The reason may be because you, 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 the reason is you want to maybe color uh, your data in the two, two different views, color it differently. Yep. So you'll have two different representation objects if you want to show it in two views. So filter properties, they act on the active filter. The information tab shows out, out to data for the active filter. Uh, the display properties, uh, allow you to change properties for the active filter and the active view, yeah? And the uh, uh, view properties act on the active view. So filters are algorithms that you apply on data. These are the most common filters uh, uh, provided in Paraview. In the previous se sections you've seen uh, uh, those illustrated. You have contour, clip, slice, threshold. Uh, we will see some of them in our examples as well. Streamlines, yeah. Grouping and uh, extracting from a group. Uh, Paraview allows you to uh, select data uh, based on attribute values. So in this image, I show how I select uh, cells from this data set where the scalar, the cell scalar is greater than uh, a provided value. Yep, and then I have to push run selection. You'll get all the cells in this spreadsheet. You'll see the selected cells on the screen. So the button in Paraview is this one. We will go through examples and play with all that. You can also select data visually with, with your mouse, and you have various ways of, of selecting it. You can select cells or points on surfaces. You can select uh, cells or points that sort of go through your or volume. So that's the case here. You get a frustum, and uh, you're going to select all those points or cells that are included inside that, that frustum. Uh, you can select points and uh, cells using a polygon, or you have interaction selection as well for points and cells, and you have hovering, so this shows you information about the uh, point where your mouse is. <coughs> so after you built your visualization pipeline, you are happy with the image, you can save your work 
Uh, you can either save data, yeah? You can save a screenshot, you should save an image. You can save the, uh, the image you have on the screen in a, a format for high quality rendering, such as PDF. Uh, you can save a movie, or you can save the state of Paraview. We, we already talked about that. That state can be saved either as an XML file or as a Python uh, file, that's, that's a detail. So, uh, they, uh, Paraview can process large uh, files. You already seen examples and I sort of scattered images through my presentation if you read the, the captions. So, you know, one billion cells, that's common, uh, even more than that. How does Paraview do this? Uh, we split the program in, I guess, three parts. The client, this is the interface that you are working with. You will have to have uh, the data server uh, running on the supercomputer or on a, or on a MPI cluster. Uh, the processing pipeline you built is executed on, so the data is split into n different pieces and the pipeline you built is executed on each of those pieces. The result, you get the result, you get an image from that piece. The images are composited uh, in the render server. So, you know, you have to take depth in consideration when you do that, notice this piece is sort of behind, so it doesn't show up in the final image. Yep, so you combo, compose those pieces of images by taking depth in, in consideration, and you send the image back to the client. So, uh, perhaps it can be split this way. More commonly, you will run the data server and the render server together, because otherwise there is too much communication and things won't run efficiently. So, these are the running modes uh, that perhaps you can use. You can uh, run as a standalone program. So in this case, the client, the render server, and the data server are sort of in the same program. Yep. So you, the only thing you see is just your executable that you run, but internally it has this, all these components. <clears throat> you run this by typing Paraview if you are in Linux or double clicking on the program. There is another program called PVPython. Here you give it a Python script and it produces the same visualization. It starts a pair view, and it does all the operations that you do using, using the interface, you do that in, in Python. <coughs> uh, the combined server, this is uh, how you, create, you, you process large data. You run the data server and the render server on a cluster or on a supercomputer this, each of these uh, individual nodes process a piece of the data and uh, send the final image to the client. You start uh, the server part by using MPI exec, you specify the number of nodes, and you use PV server. That's the program uh, <coughs> that uh, you have to start on the server side. And then on the client side, you start Paraview, that's just the client, and then you connect to the server. When you start the server, uh, the server gives you a URL. You can use that URL to connect to the server. <coughs> there is another sort of a subtly different way of running Paraview. <coughs> you can run only the server, uh, and you can execute a visualization script, but you don't have access to the interface. So uh, you can build your image, your visualization image. You run that script in parallel. So you run that using PV batch and uh, uh, with MPI exec and then the number of nodes. <coughs> okay. So, you know, this is uh, somewhat complicated. Fortunately, to connect to uh, uh, the visualization clusters here, Cooley and Theta, and there is a simpler way. So <clears throat> you have to go to File Connect, Fetch Servers. <clears throat> you, uh, 
you'll get a list of configurations for many of uh, uh, many supercomputers. <coughs> uh, Cooley and Theta apply to Argon. If you are on Windows, you have to use uh, Windows to Cooley, yep, and Windows to Theta. You have to press Import Selected. <coughs> And uh, after you imported your con uh, configuration, you have to press connect. <clears throat> so you may need to adjust some of these uh, values here. So that's where your X term is. That's uh, uh, the configuration for Mac. Yeah. The username, the number of nodes, and the minutes you reserve the uh, account and the queue, and then press OK. I had mixed success <coughs> to connect to Cooley. It seems it's very busy. It just takes a very long time. So I was able to connect last night, try the, uh, in the earlier section, I couldn't connect in like five or 10 minutes. So uh, I think Cooley is very, very busy uh, during these sessions. I can try to to start the connection right now just to see how, how, it's gonna, how it's gonna work. So, file, connect. So that's my location of Xterm. <coughs> Remote machine is, uh, the version is important. Number of nodes minutes, account and training, so let's see, let's try that. So basically this, you, you'll start scripts that will start the server for you. So let's try to do that, and then uh, we'll wait a little bit. Okay, so notice it, let's see, it starts PV server, yeah, uh, and you have a connection script, you have some more details here, unfortunately we don't need to, to know. So, okay, I am starting, that's, uh, that's uh, so we should see, uh, This coming up soon. It's better success than I heard earlier. I had earlier. <clears throat> okay, so it came up. <laughs> so uh, when you do file open, in this case, this is the file system on the remote machine. Yeah. So I copied here uh, some data files. Uh, also, if you do view memory inspector, notice I have two nodes. That's what I requested, CC063 and CC103. They have eight gigabytes each, and that's the client, yeah? So we can uh, let's try to read one of these files. Oops. So we do file open. Let's read can. Let's see. So I read the file. We have to set the properties of the reader that we say here that we want to read all the attributes. Click apply. There are a lot of, uh, I guess, communication components that might affect the, the speed here. So everything is executed on the server when you interact with the data, the rendering is produced on the server and the image is sent back 
to the client. Let's see. So I changed the, the visualization. Unfortunately, everything is, is run on just one node. Let's close this. I'm going to uh, erase this reader and just use a source. So source is wavelet. So I create another uh, data set. That's a source that creates a volume. Uh, this is how it looks like. Yeah. Now if we color by process ID, you see that uh, you have two processes. Yeah. So half of the data is on one processor, half the other half is on the second processor. Okay. You can look at volume rendering. So we change the representation here to be a volume. Yeah, so this works. You can uh, manipulate the volume. OK. So uh, I finished uh, uh, a lot earlier than I expected. We're going to move on and uh, uh, do. So everything works when you connect to Cooley. Uh, the nice thing about uh, Faraview is that everything you learn on a single node will apply directly to your work on the supercomputer. You just have to use one of these scripts, connect to the supercomputer. The script will automatically launch the, the servers for you. Uh, one thing you have to worry about is read the data in parallel, as, as Joe noticed, uh, as Joe mentioned. It, uh, so basically, your data has to be uh, parallel data so that the reading will happen fast. If it's just one big file, it's going to read that data on a single node. You can distribute that data later, but reading itself will take a long time. Uh, so you have to, to uh, you know, worry about that. So let's move on. So this is the connection in X quartz. So we're going to do the hands-on. Yep, yep. We're going to do the hands-on. Um, so I should. So I should mention that um, we do have a reservation in place on Cooley. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's for 71 nodes. Is that right, Myrna? So there's not enough for everyone to have multiple. So when you run on on Cooley, you should just request a single node. Otherwise, you probably get stuck in the queue if uh -huh. everyone does it. Mm -hmm. um, and do we have? Uh, the data that they're going to use for that in yep. a common place? Uh, not on Cooley. So I would, I would advise, you know, people can connect to Cooley just to play with things. Sure. They will transfer the data using SSH. The data is with the Paraview binary. But uh, uh, all the examples will be done. I think that's going to be easier instead of sure. doing the examples uh, on the server. Probably it's going to be easier to, to do it on everybody's computers. Right, so just do, so when you're doing the hands-on stuff, you want them to do just local. That's right, that's right. Right, yeah. so the data set that we're going to look at for um, these examples is small enough that you can handle it on, um, on your desktop, so if, or on your laptop, so if you, everyone installed, I don't know if we gave instructions for doing that, but did everyone install Paraview locally? Is that yes, you did, or, okay. Yes. All right, great. Okay. Um, and so that should have come with the, the example data sets that, that yep. Dan's going to talk about. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're gonna move on to to the next part. So, if you, how many of you try to connect to Argon, to 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 Cooley? Okay, you're you're successful. No. Uh, do you have five you five four? Four point one RC three. No, you should get. Uh, uh, 5.4.0. So you have to be careful to install 5.4.0 rather than uh, 5.4.1. If you install 5.4.1, so that's uh, one problem. You have to match the client with the server. 
Otherwise, it won't connect properly. Yes. Oh, no, there's another box down below. So download. Uh, yeah, you should get 540. Okay. So as I said, to connect, you will need party for Windows and exports for, for Mac OS, yeah? How many, just out of curiosity, how many of you have Windows? Okay. How many of you have uh, Mac OS? Okay, so more Macs. How many Linux? Okay. So for Linux, you don't need to install any additional software. You just need Data View 540. So make sure you get that one. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect to, to the server. So yeah, my, my advice would be just do everything locally. Try to connect once. Once you connected, uh, you know how to do it. The only thing different is going to be when you load the data file, you have to, it has to be a parallel data file, otherwise it's gonna take a very long time. There is a way to redistribute data, but uh, probably it's better to have the data written uh, already in parallel. Uh, if you wanna redistribute the data, there is a filter called D3 that distributes your data to, to the nodes. So if you do the examples on your local machine, everything is gonna work exactly the same. You, you learn the same, uh, I guess, tricks, the same parallel that you would use to process your data on the supercomputer. So we're gonna uh, look at parallel tutorial. Uh, you launch that in parallel. So I'm gonna disconnect. You do that using the disconnect button here. Notice here it tells me I'm using the built-in server. Yeah, so that is everything is gonna be in just one executable, okay? So to get to uh, the Parabu tutorial, you go to help. Yeah, and oh, maybe I should. Uh, one sec. Yep, I should get the out of the. Okay, so to get to uh, the Paraview tutorial, go to help, and then go to Paraview tutorial. Yeah. So we're gonna look at the exercises here, step-by-step -step exercises. We have a list of them. Okay. So create a source. So well, we already did that. Let's, you know, you create a cylinder. So sources, a bunch, you have a bunch of sources here. Create a cylinder. You have the properties for the cylinder, and you hit apply. So that's your cylinder. You can change the resolution. Notice the apply button will be highlighted to show that you need to push that, yeah? And you have higher resolution. You have 64 uh, rectangles around, yeah? Okay, so I think that's exercise one. To restart your program, uh, just hit disconnect. Well, just clean up, start fresh. So,
interacting with the view. So we're going to create the, the string there again. So a shortcut to create filters is on Mac, Alt Space. So this gives you a, a dialog here. You type the first letters of your uh, filter. So that's cylinder. Yep, enter, and then apply. So you interact with your data. You use this toolbar. So you can zoom. This button uh, resets the view so that your whole data is shown in the, in the window, yeah? So you reset the view. You, sometimes you have your data very small. You can reset the view here. Uh, this five buttons, they reorient your axis with the X up and Y to the right. Yep, so they orient your axis various ways. This uh, rotate your data with 90 degrees. Yeah, so just play with these buttons. I'm going to close the memory inspector. <coughs> OK, so these are the 3D interaction buttons. <coughs> Okay, so go back. Modifying visualization parameters, we already did that for our <clears throat> cylinder. I didn't show you uh, the dance button here. Let's see. <clears throat> there are no more. So these are all the properties for the cylinder. There's nothing more. You can play with the search. So height, H-E, oops. D-I, so radius is selected. Center is selected, yeah. Resolution is selected. So you can play with these. Uh, search button as well. You can uh, play with the display properties. So here you can change the color. Let's see. Uh, change the opacity. Yeah. OK. So let's go back. Uh, auto apply. So that's the auto apply button. Uh, you can set that. So let's uh, refresh. So disconnect and set the auto apply button. So that is apply the parameters automatically. Alt space, cylinder. Notice it didn't uh, let me change the, the parameters. It just called apply automatically. You can change the resolution here, and the resolution is changed automatically. Yeah. This is a little confusing. I always used the apply step. So I will set this back. OK, uh, going back. So changing the color palette. <clears throat> so this will allow you to color the Let's see. OK. So you have the same cylinder. That's the color palette button. So this allows you to 
change the colors that are used by Paraview for various mediums. So for instance, if you want to put your image in a paper, you probably want white background. Yeah? And that changes more than the background, it changes all the colors, like the selection color, all the colors to sort of work well with the white background. We can have a black background. Yeah. Uh, you see all the colors involved in, let's see. Oh, that's uh, preferences. Color palette. Yep. So you have a bunch of colors that are set based on the palette, palette you load. So restore defaults. Okay. Okay. So we'll go back. Undo and redo. So every action that you do in the interface, or most of the actions, are saved in a uh, undo list. So you can press undo and uh, go back to where you were before. So let's, uh, let's reset and load the cylinder. Okay, and now let's make 10, apply, and then undo. Notice the, the parameters uh, is, went back to six. Undo. Uh, it went, the state went before you uh, pushed apply. Undo. It removed the cylinder source. Yep, from the, from the list of, of readers. Okay, so you can use undo and redo. Go back. Opening a file. So, uh, let's open one of these uh, standard Paravi examples. So open, those are on Mac. Basically, where, where Paraview is, is installed, on Mac, this is applications. Paraview 5.4, contents, data. For those that, have, um, that are doing client server. Okay, projects. Projects at PASC 27 pair your data. Okay, great. So you, you heard that if you want to connect to Cooley, you can uh, do that and load the sample Paraview data sets that I have here, CAN, DISC, and uh, this one, HEAD. Uh, uh, those files are on Cooley on, on that path, yeah. So, uh, okay, so we are loading a data file. We are, we are loading disk. So let's load the disk. You have the uh, expected list of attributes that you can decide to load or not. That's to save memory. So you load all of them, you click apply. So that's your disk. You know, look at it. Uh, let's, okay, let's make it this way. So let's look at the uh, information for this data file. Yep. So, the multi-block data set. It has one block, which is an unstructured grid, tells you the number of cells, tells you the number of points, how much memory it occupies. It shows you all the attributes. It shows you the bounds of the data set. And uh, this is not a time-dependent data set, so it just has you know, one time step, okay?
So uh, let's see. Let's go back. Let's look at the next example. So changing the opening a file. Oh, OK. So representation and fill coloring. So the 2.8. Yep. So this shows you how to color your data using scalars that are available in the data file. Yep. So you do that, or, and also changing the representation. So you have two places where you can change the representation on. Uh, one is the display properties. We talked about that. So the representation is here. You can show it as an outline, as a surface. Yeah. Or you can you have those because they are commonly used. You have those in the in the toolbars as well. Yeah. So to change the colors, you can say. You want to color your data set based on the temperature field. It's available in your data. <clears throat> so you see that you can color it by pressure. I think that's nicer. Yep. You get the same things in the display properties here. So you color it by pressure or by temperature. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's uh, that's the end of this exercise. So two eight. Okay. Applying a filter. So let's do this last one and then we take a break. Okay. So <clears throat> the filter we're going to apply is contour. Yep. So we have the data set loaded. Okay. Uh, let's see what we want to get at. Okay. We want to show this as a wireframe. And then you apply a filter. So the filter is applied on the data produced by the active filter. Yep. So right now, disk is selected. This reads the disk into memory. And then you apply the contour. Uh, you can adjust the properties here. So you contour by a certain scalar. Let's see what's the scalar. You want to contour by temperature. Yep. And then you have to specify what's the value that you want to use to create your contour, 400, and then apply. OK? So this created a surface that follows all the scalar values uh, with temperature equals 400 uh, degrees. OK? So this is your pipeline. You read the disk in memory. And then you create the contour. Okay. Okay. Uh, so hopefully, maybe you'll uh, launch the the installation procedure. So more of you will have the Paraview will have Paraview install. Uh, we'll take a break and come back. I guess in half an hour. Understand.